Our goal is to simulate the behavior of dense foam. Our approach uses a material point method augmented with the herschel bulkley plasticity model, which enables it to closely match the observed behavior of real foam. What benefits does the herschel bulkley model bring when compared to other plasticity models? With a simpler perfect plasticity model, the foam flows immediately after the shear stress exceeds the yield threshold. With a viscoplastic model, the flow begins slowly once the shear exceeds the yield threshold. The rate of flow, however, is constant. The nonlinear Herschel Bulkley flow model introduces proper shear thinning behavior. This allows the foam to flow more rapidly when the applied stress is large, which agrees with the empirical behavior of real foam. Next, we demonstrate the benefits of our resampling in explicit tearing techniques. Without resampling, a sheared blob of foam can develop non-physical empty voids. Our resampling strategy adds and removes material points as needed to eliminate this problem. Without explicit support for tearing, a long and slender non-physical tendril forms. Our model permits the thin tendril to properly tear. Next, we compare the effects of plastic recovery. If we set a large value for plastic relaxation, the foam exhibits a brittle appearance. With a smaller plastic relaxation value, we obtain a more sticky tearing effect. With the addition of our simple subgrid geometry removal, we can eliminate the remaining artificially stiff thread-like artifacts, which are caused by under-resolved geometry. We will now show examples simulated using our method. We simulate a s'more by squeezing a marshmallow between two graham crackers and a piece of chocolate. As we compress the marshmallow, it begins to deform and flow, eventually seeping through the holes in the graham cracker. As we lift up the cracker afterwards, the marshmallow exhibits a necking behavior and eventually tears. This example mimics a roasted marshmallow, where a stiff outer layer approximates the crispy exterior and a soft inner layer approximates the molten marshmallow core. After a critical amount of compression, the outer layer cracks allowing the soft inner layer to flow outwards. Next, we throw a pie composed of whipped cream at a face. When the pie collides with the face, the collisions induce large internal stresses and the cream begins to flow. The pie subsequently accumulates plasticity, stretches, and tears. Afterwards, chunks of whipped cream adhere to the face. Our next example explores the application of our method to oobleck, a shear thickening material. We show a side-by-side -side comparison between viscoplastic and shear thickening materials. At high stresses, the flow rate of the shear thickening material is low, hence it behaves like an elastic material and bounces off the ground. In contrast, the flow rate of the viscoplastic material is much higher and it starts to flow immediately. Instead of spheres, we can use the same materials to simulate penguin-shaped geometry. Next, we use the same shear thickening oobleck material to simulate a pachinko machine with falling penguins. Due to shear thickening, the rapidly falling penguins initially bounce off the pachinko pins with only an occasional wing or foot detaching from the bodies. As the penguins are slowed by collisions with the pins, they experience lower stresses and thus begin to flow and lose their shape. We now illustrate the effect of each parameter of our model. With a higher shear modulus, the material becomes stiffer. Setting a lower shear modulus allows for more stretchy behavior. With a higher yield stress, the material behaves more elastically, while with a lower yield stress, the material can easily flow, allowing for a more fluid-like behavior.
At higher viscosities, the material appears more damped and viscous, while at lower viscosities, the material flows more readily. With a high Herschel Bulkley power, the flow rate is lower under large stresses. With a low Herschel Bulkley power, the material flows more easily with large stresses, capturing shear thinning behaviors. With a high tear yield, the material tends to stick to itself, while with a low tear yield, the material can more easily tear, allowing for a brittle looking fracture. With a high plastic relaxation, the material easily tears, while with a low plastic relaxation, the material takes on a stickier appearance. After this parameter tuning cycle, we achieve the desired look for the pie toss, as we show here. Thank you for your attention.